So I think that, you know, there are two different things. <clears throat> it's certainly true that um, if you look at a system like Affinity, uh, it, it's like cloud 3.0, if you like, the idea that the internet itself will be a computer. Um, companies may like that because they don't have to um, add a dependency like Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud and so, on, and so on. But there are other advantages that the blockchain computer, the internet computer, if you like, will bring. And some of these include, um, uh, you know, the ability to reduce the total cost of IT um, through reducing the human capital involved. And I, I think that's a general challenge right the way across society, you know, that automation can put people out of work. It doesn't mean probably that the technology should be made worse. Um, it means that policymakers need to consider, um, you know, how to um, deliver full employment. I think the Scandinavian countries are probably yes. leading the way in that. Inga, what about from yeah, your point of view as a company? What's your well, responsibility? Not to say from a company, but from a, a, a being a human, mm. being a person. I started in insurance 36 years ago. The job that I was doing 36 years ago is entirely different to the job someone called the same thing is doing today. Mm. So I can see just in my sector how those jobs have changed. So I'm not so gloomy. I think jobs will be different. And if we think about since the creation of the web, how many new jobs have been created? When did we think or even know that we needed data scientists everywhere? So I'm not so pessimistic about jobs just um, employment just falling away. New jobs will be needed. People will be reskilled, and they'll be doing different things. But I'm, I'm actually kind of curious if I could jump in with a question um, to the two of you. Who do you think should be responsible for driving the reskilling? Is it incumbent on the corporate CEO? Is it incumbent on the government? Is it incumbent on a combination of the two? You know, who, it, you say there's reskilling, but we see a lot of people saying, "Great, we'll just hire the new graduate and." you know, here's your severance package. Yeah, and um, I think businesses have a responsibility, and we know, particularly when people are going to be living much longer and they're going to be having a totally different mm. life journey, they're going to have to work much longer, they're going to have multiple different careers, and they're going to have to reskill constantly. And business has got to take responsibility for a mm. lot of that. There's no way we can, we can just suddenly increase our turnover and bring these new people in. We've got to, as businesses, retrain and reskill our own people. But I think there's also an, um, a role for governments to play, starting in education, thinking about how we educate people totally differently to the way I got educated, you know, back in the 70s and um, 80s. Um, so I think it's a combination of both. I mean, it's, it's, I, I can only really comment on the technology, technology industry, but um, it's certainly the case that although we've been through many generations of, for example, enterprise technology, um, people, there's still demand for the old skills. So COBOL's the perfect example. There's enormous demand for COBOL programmers. Um, so, you know, COBOL programmers, you know, in, in their 60s are earning fantastic salaries uh, due to the shortage of them. So I think that's probably a positive. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.